Hey, thanks for joining me for part two. This is Deborah with Fleet and Family again. I want to continue talking to you a little bit about some of those tips and tricks and lessons I've learned as a military spouse along the way when it comes to reintegration and, and homecoming and all the joy and fear and stress and anxiety that comes along with it. Uh, so think back to pre-deployment and you probably learned about those cycles of deployment, the emotional roller coasters that um, you are going on as a service member, as a spouse, as a parent, a sibling. Uh, so there's a lot that comes along with it and there's a lot that comes along with reintegration as well. Believe it or not, there's a cycle for that too. And so... Earlier, we talked a little bit about communication and how it's super important to share those expectations, communicate, asking those open-ended questions. And so now I just want to touch on a little bit more with regards to expectations. Um, one of the things that I know I personally struggle with is assumption, right? I assume that my husband is going to want homecoming to be a certain way and especially at the beginning I wouldn't even ask. There was that surprise, there was the excitement, there was all these things and I learned the hard way. Before I get into some of those stories though, let's talk about making sure we're balancing our time. Right? What is time management like for you now? Right now, you're being told what to do, when to do it, and your time honestly is being managed for you. So what happens when that routine goes away? What happens when you are left to your own devices and you have the ability to make those options, you know, those choices? You decide when to eat, you get to decide what you wanna watch on TV. Um, you know, the world is your oyster at that point. So. How do we make sure that we are spending enough time or, you know, any time at all with the different parts? So, again, another great conversation to have. Let's talk about that. Balancing our time. We want to make sure that we are spending quality time with the individuals that want to spend time with us, not just quantity. I could sit on the couch with my husband for hours on end and if nothing's happening, if there's no interaction between the two of us, is that really quality time? No, that's just a lot of time probably now wasted on social media or watching TV or whatever the case may be. Right, so we want to make sure that we are addressing this. Now, it may be a little different, right, in this particular homecoming. Um, if you have family that is out of town, they may not be able to travel now due to just the state of the world that we're living in. Uh, but maybe they are coming. So maybe you have family in town that also wants to spend time. And now you're like, well, how do I manage time with my spouse or my significant other, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, and spend time with mom, dad, brother, sister, anybody that came in and not feel guilty. Communicate these expectations to all the parties, right? Make sure that you are first and foremost taking care of yourself. Self-care is not selfish. And if anybody has seen me in a brief before, it is something that I say. It's kind of like, you know, a mantra, if you will. Self-care is not selfish. We have to be able to take care of ourselves first. And that goes for you. You have come back from a long time of being away, right? A lot of things that you just need time to decompress or time to sit on the couch staring at a TV that's not even turned on, right? That was probably the scariest moment for me as a spouse uh, to go in and just walk in one day after work and my husband was sitting there on the couch just staring at the TV. And I kind of had to go over and poke him like, hey, 
You know, are you alive? Are you breathing? But he needed that time to decompress. And I had no idea, right? Again, early, early on um, in the great Navy life, right? That I learned a lot of these lessons. So share that. If you need time, let them know. One of the biggest things with, uh, I know our families is they're out of town. So do my in-laws come in, right? Do they fly in? Do they get to be on the pier when my husband steps off the ship? Or do they get to join me at the airport when they fly in? That was a conversation that was not really a fun one, right? But I had to have it. I had to have it for myself. I had to have it for my husband. Uh, and I think by and large, you know, my mother-in-law mostly really took it well. Um, we told them that especially after that point in time that it was important for us to be able to have time together. And when we were ready, we would then go to them uh, so we would fly, we would make a trip out of it, and then be able to incorporate that part of the family into our lives again that way. Same kind of thing, you know, if you have kids um, and they want to come out, hey, now they're there. Let them babysit the kids. Take your spouse out on a date. Enjoy some of that time, just the two of you together. Look at it that way. Maybe that's an opportunity to practice balancing that time. But first and foremost, take care of yourself because self-care is not, you guessed it, selfish. Okay. So along with those expectations, right, have, have that conversation. I had to have that conversation with my mother-in-law. You know, hubby gets off the ship. I get the hug and kiss first. Then it's her. Right. So figure out what those expectations are. Maybe your spouse, your significant other, your mom, dad, whomever already have those expectations in play. And let me tell you, we are a culture that loves to commit a suicide. We assume everything, right? We hold ourselves accountable, but the other people don't even know, right? So why are we having those expectations placed on us if we don't even know what we're living up to? So don't assume, right? Don't let our spouses, don't let our loved ones assume as well, okay? Now, again, I told you that there were some pretty funny stories early on in our marriage about homecoming and deployment. And yes, I was one of those spouses that learned the hard way. So going back to making sure that we are not just assuming right? That we are communicating expectations. Um, very first one, you heard me mention the party in the backyard. It was the neighborhood. It was the family. It was the barbecue. It was everything. And it's a good thing that my husband is extremely gracious. Um, so I learned later on that that was not the way to go about things. A um, few more trial and errors along the way, but I will tell you, I remember the first time I really thought I had it right. I um, asked those questions that I talked about in the beginning. I said, hey, you know, what do you want for homecoming? And at first he's like, I don't know, you decide. No. So let me give you some choices. Here's choice A. Here's choice B. Here's choice C. Um, so we finally got down to the fact that all he wanted was a sign. So he wanted that big poster and then he wanted chocolate chip cookies. So you guys know my hubby, he is the cookie monster. So I was there homecoming day. I was all excited. I had his poster. I had chocolate chip cookies in hand and then I knew they wouldn't last long. So I had backups at home. We got home, everything was great so far, right? It was just what he had asked for. And lo and behold, we come in and right there, see that, that rug right there in the entryway? Boom, down goes the sea bag and up those stairs he goes to hop into the shower for what seemed like an eternity. 
I kid you not, it took a moment. I had no idea that this is what was going to happen next. And by the time he finally came back down those stairs, I was standing on the edge of that carpet, tapping my toes, hands on my hips, kind of like, what do you want me to do with the sea bag? Right? Am I the one now that's responsible for unpacking this? Do I have to throw your dirty, stinky clothes in the laundry? What's going on? Had we had the conversation of, hey, honey, I'm going to drop my bag here. Don't touch it. I'm going upstairs. I'm going to take the first shower in months without shower shoes. And I am just going to, you know, use as much hot water as I can until the tank is empty. And then he's probably still going to stand there. It would have been a much different story when he came back down those stairs. <sighs> Communicate those expectations, right? Um, again, this last time has by far been the best. Uh, I knew about the sea bag being dropped in the foyer. I didn't worry about it. I had the cookies ready to go. This time he wanted no sign. Uh, so there was no sign, but there were the cookies. There were the backup cookies at home. I knew that when he came home, again, that sea bag was going right there in the middle of the floor, and I didn't worry about it. As he went upstairs, I ordered pizza because that was what he said he wanted as his first meal back, and everything was good to go. So again, communicate those expectations. Let us, as your loved ones back home, know what you want. Uh, and it's okay if you tell us, hey, I just want to be kind of alone for a little bit. I need some of that time. Don't let us assume, right? Because if we assume that we know what you want, we may not always be right. Stay tuned for a few more tips uh, along the way. Not just tips from me, uh, but some of our experts, some of the spouses that have gone down this road before us. So I'll see you again in just a little bit.